Hi all, thank you for tuning in to, for today uh, Cosmos Hub community call. Uh, let's wait uh, other another couple of minutes to just see uh, if anyone else is want to join. Uh, in general, today we are going to talk uh, to focus strictly about governance. Uh, I just want to remind all of you while you are here that there are two Cosmos Hub uh, governance proposal in voting period right now. We have the 88 increase the community pool tax on the Cosmos Hub by simply staking. Um, it's extremely important to vote because we are still. We still need to reach the quorum. So uh, if there are validators here, if there are, uh, if any of you is an Atom delegator, please uh, remember to vote, cast your vote, whatever is your choice. We have to participate and reach the quorum. Uh, same thing about proposal 89, Cosmos Ecosystem News video from Com Cosmic Validator. Um, here we have the same participation. Uh, would be really, really good to reach the forum, the forum on both the um, proposals. So please just cast your vote. Uh, let me see. Uh, I see that Rob already uh, joined the call. Hi, Rob. Uh, Rob is a really active community member that joined recently a lot of Cosmos Community Hub call regarding Cosmos governance. I will say that is quite on top of everything that is going on um, going on recently. Uh, we also have the participation of the uh, proposal that we were uh, discussing earlier. So the community hair research analytics and benchmarking that is still a draft proposal on the Cosmos Hub forum. You can find the link to the proposal itself in the uh, in the uh, Twitter space link. Uh, I will now uh, let the word to Rob to just start introducing himself and his uh, recent contribution and uh, all the story that brought him to Cosmos. And then maybe if we have Daniel or any other from the uh, proposal team of the Community Health proposal, maybe they can introduce themselves as well so we can be, we'll start the conversation. Uh, welcome again to everyone. Thanks for uh, the introduction, Danilo. Hey everyone, I am Rob and uh, I am a community member that has been active in the last two years in Cosmos. I'm mostly passionate about governance and uh, everything around uh, this amazing tech. Today we have uh, an interesting discussion because uh, I think it's, uh, it's a good fit for the bear market, which is uh, community health. And uh, we have Daniel from uh, R&D DAO, and uh, he basically has this proposal uh, that, uh, that will prepare a set of tools for community health research and benchmarking. And um, the proposal will go through uh, technical tools and also a philosophical approach to, uh, to the community research that uh, r and DAO is developing. They've done uh, several results about what is the definition of community health, but I think, uh, Daniel, we can, we, we'll expand more on that. So uh, please, Daniel, if you can introduce yourself and uh, your background and uh, also give, give us an introduction of R&D DAO. Sure, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Um, so I'm Daniel. I'm an organization designer by trade. I've been for roughly the, the past 10 years thinking about governance and organization design, essentially different ways for humans to work together after having an earlier career in the food world and specifically in research and development, uh, where I was trying to figure out different ways to, to innovate, to come up with new ideas as a group of people and trying to avoid all the politics and bureaucracy that comes from that. Then around 2018, I discovered DAOs as kind of as for exploring self-management and systems thinking and a range of other things. DAOs seem to be like the next very exciting frontier to be able to experiment and play. Uh, ended up last year as head of governance at Aragon. And then December a year ago, we started RNDAO. And RNDAO is an uh, innovation DAO, if you like. It's a uh, is a platform for different R&D projects. We usually start going 
very deep in research on a specific area and then moves towards crafting solutions after we have understood the problem really well. The, the reason for that approach was that we are seeing a lot of people moving into Web3 from, from Web2, very quickly starting to prototype solutions and ideas. And unfortunately, organizations are very complex. We, we very much believe that we need different perspectives, different disciplines coming together. And if we're going to really invent better organizations, a better society, we need to, to bridge these different perspectives and come up with different solutions that's been done in the past. So hence the emphasis on research at the beginning. And that's kind of what brought us to community health as a topic of interest, as many people were asking on Twitter, how do I measure community? And they knew what the wrong answers were. Like it's fairly well understood that the number of members on a Discord chat doesn't mean anything. It's fairly well understood that the number of messages is a really poor way to track community. And in general, we have some ideas around what sort of things might be good to build a community, like building relationships and, and so on between people. But we don't really know what are, the, what are great practices and we don't really know how to assess whether a community succeeds. And part of the reason for that is that some organizations might be very well known, not because they have a great community, but perhaps because they receive a lot of investment or they created a good protocol and so on. And they might be succeeding despite a series of bad practices around community. Yet a lot of these bad practices can be copied just because they are successful, not thanks to these practices, but in spite of them. So we wanted to essentially dig a little bit deeper into this topic and understand what it is that we can do to really help DAOs and protocols and in general this new range of ecosystems that we are creating to take a more community-centric approach, move away from only looking at metrics like total value locked or things like that that are, well, first create horrible financialization and second, they're not even good for investors because um, they don't even provide you a good indication of whether an ecosystem or an organization is going to be successful or not. So that's how we started down this rabbit hole. And now we are about eight months into this research. And that's brought us to the proposal and us being here. Awesome. And uh, I think this is uh, pretty much very interesting because uh, I think we are pretty early in all of this DAO organization. And uh, we are yet uh, to understand what is the right approach with the community, how we have to engage with the community, because it's all experimental. We are in this uh, initial experimental phase of uh, decentralized finance, decentralized autonomous organization. So it's always good to have a specific organiz organization that do, that do good research uh, on how we can improve uh, and especially in a fair way. So my next question will be, of course, um, how uh, you have discovered Cosmos, uh, why uh, you uh, picked up uh, Cosmos uh, for uh, this proposal, why you think that uh, the Cosmos community is uh, a good fit for uh, your research. So if you can expand on uh, how basically you, you discovered Cosmos and uh, shared this proposal. Sure, thank you. So I, I mean, I've been aware of Cosmos for a very long time. I just, let's say, haven't had the the excuse to dive in. So I was only involved from, from afar. I had a few atoms since a few years, but that was about it. And then specifically, as we were advancing this initiative, Cosmos is particularly interesting from a decentralization point of view. The, the idea that we have an ecosystem of chains rather than a single chain uh, makes it particularly important at the level of community because also we can have a few organizations, let's say the Cosmos Hub or the organization that is specifically maintaining or building one of the other chains and so on, the community tends to cross across them. And, and, and there is some level of overlap in between them in, in this area. And what ties the whole thing together, other than a little bit of technology, but like what really ties it together over time, because the, the technology will become obsolete very quickly unless it's maintained and refined and improved and so on. So what really ties this whole thing together over time is the community. And so whether the community is aligned or not, whether the community is healthy and is something people want to be part of and attracts more talent and resources and, and, and ideas and participation, 
or on the other hand becomes a hostile place that people don't want to be part of, that is draining, where there is burnout and so on, can really make the difference for, for this ecosystem. And then in, in particular, I think there is a good level of receptivity while there are other ecosystems that could equally benefit from these, but they will have a less sophisticated mindset. They're perhaps a little bit too stuck in Web2. So it will have been very, 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 very hard for us to essentially show them why this is important. While we thought that in Cosmos, we'll find a little bit more of a like-minded community that was receptive to these ideas. And then we could move quickly to essentially advancing them. And then hopefully through contributing to the success of Cosmos, we can then prove to other ecosystems that this is something to value and pay attention to while we can keep on knocking on a, on a closed door and keep on trying to explain to someone who doesn't want to hear forever and we won't have the ability to prove it. So we generally like a lot more to, to show rather than tell. And we thought Cosmos was a great ground to, to do that. Yeah, and also I think that uh, Cosmos being this uh, ecosystem of ecosystem, so it's... Um, really a peculiar and a unique community because it's not only uh, one place, one ecosystem that has uh, many up on, on, on top, but uh, it's a connected ecosystem. So the community really take uh, a different shape. And I think that uh, in your research I've been reading, uh, you have been talking about fragmentation of the community, which uh, I think is quite on topic uh, with because uh, we have airdrop and uh, most of the time airdrop lead also to fragmentation of the community because some community member maybe find that uh, one of the airdrop received is a more interesting place to stay and spend his time. And this could be also very interesting with uh, the, the upcoming uh, dynamics of uh, interchange security that uh, basically will bring uh, many, many more uh, fragmented community around uh, this big community that is Cosmo now, that is Cosmos Hub. So speaking about uh, uh, what are the benefits of uh, your research for uh, Cosmos Hub, what do you think about this aspect of fragmentation? And do you think that uh, your research could help us actually to, uh, to basically have a more healthy community when it comes to the upcoming features? and? Uh, to face uh, this fragmentation, to kind of start to have uh, uh, a community that uh, is also capable to understanding each other. And uh, so basically what your research actually will bring to Cosmos in terms of benefits for the community. So it's still early stage to, to let's say, realize the full benefits. So let me present it a little bit as a roadmap where we can, we have to start small, but as these advances, we can look at more and more ambitious objectives while still trying to deliver some value in the short term. So the first thing is once we deploy the tool, uh, one of the first few indicators that we can start to look around is, to, is through mapping the, the shape of the social network. When we map the shape of the social network, there is uh, in, the, in the literature review we've done and with some of the network scientists that we work with, there is already a series of indicators that we have shortlisted that can be particularly interesting. I mean, we still need to run the algorithm with the data and so on. But the, one of the most promising ones has been something called the, the small, uh, small world index. And the small world index compares the shape of the, the social network of the Cosmos Hub, like with the data we're able to gather, to a theoretical perfect network in terms of information flow. So a small world usually means that you have small pockets that are clustered, where there is like a small group of people that really talk between them. And then these pockets are loosely connected to other pockets. So in practice, with one or two introductions, you're pretty much able to reach every, everyone in the network, but you're not hearing everyone at the same time because that becomes overwhelming. My, my gut feeling is that probably Cosmos has not enough clusterization, so it might be a little bit overwhelming, some of the conversations and the, the shape is happening in the community. And this tends to, to mean that a lot of people cannot fully engage 
because it will require too big a bandwidth to manage so many relationships and so many people coming from different directions at the same time. But in practice, we don't know yet. So for example, if we were able to, to show these, we could now start to think of a few initiatives to try to create a little bit more pods or subgroups or try to essentially fragment a little bit more the community, not in terms of the identity, but in terms of the way the conversations are happening. And this would lead to more effective information flow. So without us, let's say, trying to dictate in any way what the outcome of conversation should be or the outcome of decisions, we could use this information to facilitate how the community is having conversations and making decisions between them, or at least to pinpoint what sort of problems or directions the, uh, or initiatives might be necessary. The, the other areas that we can then start to look at is um, with other set of indicators, we can also look uh, and keep track of the general feeling that the community has, both in terms of how much they identify with Cosmos itself, like do they feel themselves, do they see themselves as cosmonauts or do they, do they not really identify with it? And that identification is really important because it makes the difference of whether people are willing to fight for something or persevere in the, fate, in the face of these difficulties or not. So if we see that, for example, identification starts to go down over time, there is a range of initiatives that can be done for that related to, to rituals, to gathering people and talking about what's the vision, what's our reason for being and so on. Um, while on the other hand, if it's high, you don't necessarily need to do those sort of initiatives or, or activities. So providing these metrics already kind of gives a signal to the community, a sort of mirror for the community to see itself and understand, do we need to go, do we need to pay attention to these and invest time into these activities? Or maybe now we can focus in other problems. Um, the other thing that you can start to see is what's the, the perception of the, the relationships between people? Are they strained? Are they not strained? And so on. And so at that point, you can start to think, well, maybe let's invest a little bit more in conflict resolution mechanisms. And do we need to get some third party that offers these services or run some workshops to express grievances and so on? Uh, or conversely, this is not the top priority at this point, and there is other priorities. So the, the different metrics in the short term already allows us, hopefully, well, or allows the Cosmos community to prioritize initiatives. And hence focus a little bit more on the, the things that would have its, the highest impact for it to, to thrive as a community. Over then, the, the medium to long term, we can start to monitor the evolution of the community over time and see whether the initiatives that have been taken are, are working or not. And as we start to then learn about what's, what works and what doesn't, then we can further refine, do more of what's working, do less of what's not working. And hopefully the data allows us to see uh, all of these, but we'll only be able to do it, uh, to, to know it over time as we need to benchmark against ourselves. Um, and so no, you know, no, it's, it, it was higher or lower than before. So that's also the importance of kind of getting it started now. And in that sense, we have, uh, we have another proposal that's, uh, that's more related about facilitating a governance process. And one of, the, one of the questions we're asking ourselves with this other proposal is kind of like, how can we define success criteria? So also these two proposals are completely independent and they're being done by different teams in, in our and As I was saying, we're kind of a platform for projects or these are two different projects, uh, slightly different teams, uh, these slightly different people. But, with this other one, we had like, how do we know if these, uh, if we are, if we have succeeded or not? And if we are able to get the community health proposal passed and implemented in time, we will already have the data there to know whether the other things are having an effect or not, as an example. So we can even help uh, this sort of knowing what's working and what not can also translate to uh, facilitating impact metrics or in improving accountability on the sort of proposals that are funded. Thank you for uh, the deep explanation. And uh, before going uh, into more the technical aspect of the proposal, I wanna still a little bit touching about uh, the community health uh, idea and the uh, philosophical idea behind because uh, as you explained just now, basically, 
this is something that will help us uh, into more coordination and also to find more alignment and decision which uh, which i think uh, i mean it's uh, it's something absolutely uh, that is needed in any cause in, in any community to to reach an agreement but i think it's also very important uh, for a community and for an healthy community is uh, to preserve the diversity because i think that uh, Having a multiple opinion, uh, it always has been uh, a peculiarity of the Cosmos ecosystem because uh, we have uh, this uh, wide community where uh, any community member has a critical mind. And I think uh, this is uh, one of the best aspects of, of this community. So how do you, how do you see actually uh, diversity of uh, community member and opinion in this whole community health idea? Do you think that diversity is a, is a part of this idea? So that community health is also actually adding diversity? Yes, and yes and no. So it depends how diversity is included. Diversity is really important to avoid things like groupthink or self-confirmation biases to, eventually, to essentially avoid being detached from the ecosystem. Because if you lose sight of the ecosystem, you end up dying as an organization or as an ecosystem altogether. Like if you lose sight of the broader nested system that you're part of. At the same time, too much diversity in an, organi in an organization or an ecosystem that doesn't know how to handle diversity can be very, very difficult. If I get people who in the same room, 10 people who speak each a different language and there is no one who knows who speaks at least two of those languages so can serve as a bridge, most likely these people will not be able to agree on anything. So the, the, the complex bit there is how to essentially maximize diversity without stretching to the point of breaking. And some of that comes down to inclusivity or like how effective the community is at assimilating people. So, we don't have yet uh, very good mechanisms to, to measure this or to explore this. This is one of the areas because uh, the whole community health thing is a huge topic. We can probably be researching that for the next 10 to 30 to who knows how many years, probably a lifetime. People have been studying it for lifetimes and I don't see that stopping. Um, and we would hope to get to this soon. Uh, that being said, there is a few things that we can already start to do in this regard. And is uh, and then maybe I can pass it to Katerina, who's here with us, who's uh, one of my my colleagues, and in many ways more of an expert in these areas. She's got a PhD in organizational network science and team performance, so maybe we can pass it on to her after. But one thing I could quickly say is that the when we look at the shape of the network, if we see that there are two very to essentially two divided communities that are not very connected between them just by the shape of the conversations. And each of these communities has a strong sense of identification, a strong sense of identity. At that point, most likely you're talking about two very different identities. And, and this could perhaps be the case in, in Cosmos at the moment, given the whole context around Atom2. Atom um, I don't know, if, again, don't know for certain, but if you start to see these, you then know that the issue is not so much a lack of identity. The issue is more that these communities are not having an effective conversation between them and that can be facilitated. So you can sort of have not an ideal indicator, but some level of indication of what are the different identities or sub communities in the, as part of the overall community and play around with that to optimize it, uh, to, make it to make it work. As far as the individual diversity, we can talk of like diversity of gender, of race, or all of these different things. And this is not something we're addressing at the moment, um, partially because we're avoiding collecting any personal data. It would be very complicated at this stage to be able to collect and store that data safely. There are perhaps some demographic things that we could look into. Uh, and equally, we could try to look for professional backgrounds or different things like that. But as I'm saying, that's not yet something we're covering. Thank you for the explanation. I think that uh, this is uh, quite, uh, it is quite textual at the moment. Uh, you touched the property too, so you, you're definitely updated about Cosmos and uh, 
This is actually positive because uh, I like that you are engaging uh, with Cosmos also with the knowledge of the past and uh, of the community. Also, if uh, uh, if anyone or uh, Katerina also want to join the conversation, uh, feel free to make a request. So we, we will have also other feedback uh, on the conversation. As well, for anyone that want to make questions, uh, they can also use uh, the chat on the bottom right of the Twitter space if they prefer uh, making uh, a question through, through writing. I will also go uh, a bit on the technicals because uh, in your proposal, you basically are mentioning about uh, a Discord bot. So it is the Discord bot, uh, the, the tool that will be used to collect the data mainly about uh, your research? Yes, that's our, that's our starting point. Uh, we're already in conversation with another group who's also looking at uh, voting data. Because the, the more different data sources we have, the more of a comprehensive picture we can create. Then we need to figure out how to balance that with the, let's say, keeping the cost of the proposal manageable and just starting somewhere and then building from that. So for us, we're starting with the Discord data. Another team is working on voting data. And they reach out to us that saying that once they have an idea of whether they're going to be funded or not, they want to collaborate with us because we have uh, a lot more background and let's say, insights on the sort of indicators and how to manage the data while they could develop the, the technical solution just to capture the, the voting data. And so maybe at that point, we could start to combine both sources. Then uh, we could think if this initial pilot is working, if it's adding value to the community, if we have proven ourselves, and so we have been able to generate a little bit of trust, then we could also include a next phase where we also look at the forum data. And that would require us then building the, the next plugin for that and connecting it. And it's something that we very much want to do. Uh, but as I was saying, the first step is just a simple Discord bot that allows us to start getting a few, uh, a few insights and with the poll survey as well to get some of that perception data. And we can provide that to the community Hopefully something good comes out of it and that motivates us to the, uh, the community to say, this is very valuable. Here is some, some extra funds to then go and do the, the next bit of research and include another data source and expand from that. So basically, when, uh, when you speak about the data, who will actually have access to this data? Will the data be shared uh, only uh, within uh, your group or also the admins of Cosmos will have access to data also for uh, regulation uh, and uh, GPDR reasons? So we, we are keeping all the, all the personal data uh, locked. It would only be our, our data scientists who, who have access to that and a couple of the detecting people who need to have access to it to be able to maintain the database. Uh, but we're trying to keep it as restricted as possible because what we're trying to look into is really the, the aggregate patterns and not the, the individual behavior. We're not creating sort of surveillance or tracking software, we're more looking at overall macro patterns in the data. Like you wouldn't want to know, for example, to disclose how a specific individual necessarily has voted over a period of time, um, or you could argue whether that's good or bad, but at least uh, it's very certain that it's contentious, while you can very safely say 50% of voters have gone in this direction. That being said, uh, if we're already starting to discuss a partnership with Maastricht University, uh, this is only early stage. So, you know, just, just to explain the sort of way we're thinking about this, in which we could anonymize the data and then pass it to this university where the data science students there could run further analysis on the data without being able to reveal the, the identity of any individual. Uh, but we could that way complement even our team's capacity and perhaps publish some research papers that allows us to understand better things about the, the nature of communities and ecosystems and so on. And, and we could think about different similar ways to work with other members of the Cosmos community who are interested in running analysis or exploring different, different metrics that we could play around with the data and so on, um, as long as we're not putting at risk the let's say the individuals of having their identity disclosed that being said 
we're not collecting any data. Like we're not asking people what their wallet address is. We're not asking them about their age or demographic or nationality or, or their name or anything like that. It's just purely the data that's coming from Discord plus the perception data, which is not linked to their individual um, identifier. So we know kind of like the messages that they shared in Discord, that data is being collected. And then on the other side, separate, and the two are not merged, separate, we have this, the, the poll surveys, which ask things like, how do you identify with this community or how connected you are, or can ask a few things around well-being and so on. So it allows us to prioritize different initiatives, but we're not connecting the two, uh, so not to jeopardize that. It's a complex topic. It's something that we, we're constantly thinking about because there is not one right answer. And we hope this can, can evolve. And over time, we can find ways to perhaps like encrypt the data and make it fully open without having to go through us. Uh, but this will require us some time and thinking about technical solutions and all of that. As I'm saying, we're just starting small and then hopefully can build to bigger things. So, so related to, to, to this, uh, from my understanding, uh, this is also not only about uh, uh, Cosmos, but uh, it's also about funding uh, a public good in this meaning, because uh, basically the data that uh, you will collect uh, to Cosmos will also help uh, in this uh, wider research. Uh, so in this sense, uh, and of course, correct me, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, uh, Will others' uh, project participate in this uh, in this research, or uh, this is something that is Cosmos ex exclusively, or uh, you maybe already have partnership also and funding from other projects? So, because research and public goods are hard to fund, but they benefit everyone, our approach has been uh, has been twofold. On one side, we are splitting the the cost across multiple entities and multiple protocols. We already received some grant funding from Aragon, Ave, uh, Meta Cartel, and, and a couple others. And, and now we are applying for Cosmos funding. That helps us to fund the, the deep research, like compared to say a basic analytics tool that just shows you number of messages or something like that. Uh, we're using these splitting the funds to, to essentially fund the deeper thinking. And then on the other side, the, the insights generated are twofold. One are going to be very specific analysis about Cosmos Hub or Cosmos, and those are only really useful for Cosmos. Like all other protocols might be maybe curious about it. You know, uh, these things are going to be shared with the community. So if anyone that's from the outside the ecosystem wants to kind of like part of the community, see the, see the outputs, it's for the community to decide whether those are open or not. Um, but they won't really be relevant for anyone else. On the other hand, we might start to realize some deeper mechanics or deeper principles at play that are not only specific to Cosmos. And part of the way for us to learn that and to then be able to use them both to provide insights or let's say to advise Cosmos Hub and to advise other communities on the best path forward is to be able to compare and contrast the data of different ecosystems and different communities. So we can see this community is doing really well in this aspect, that community is not doing very well on that aspect, what it is that they're, that they're doing differently. And then maybe we can start to understand some, some best practices with, uh, with proper research, with like a scientific approach, uh, rather than just like, oh, that sounds nice. And, and this is part of the bigger project that we hope to accomplish over time. But again, that, that will probably take multiple more months as we gather data from multiple communities and are able to compare them and contrast them and so on. So we have, uh, to summarize, we have the specific insights that are only for Cosmos and the deployment of the tool that's only for Cosmos. And then we have the more primary research side that is indeed a public good and can benefit any sort of online digital community, web free community. Okay, thanks for uh, expanding. And uh, I mean, I think that Cosmos uh, is also uh, part of uh, part of funding already in the past uh, public goods. So uh, I think uh, this is part of the mission of Web three and uh, and on blockchain in some extent. 
And uh, based also on this, uh, on the fact that basically the Discord bot will be the main uh, and the starting point, uh, uh, the current state of uh, the Cosmos Discord is uh, that basically is uh, mostly private. So I think uh, that uh, this is something that also should be discussed with uh, people currently managing the Discord, especially in case the proposal will pass, because uh, as of now, from a rough estimation, the bot will have access basically on 5% of all channel in the server. And... Uh, and in, the, in this sense, uh, it will require a little bit of a coordination. And uh, also on this, uh, uh, basically, once you, you basically deliver this uh, Discord bot for Cosmos, uh, we will have uh, uh, this tool uh, uh, forever, or we'll have uh, a limited time, uh, basically, if uh, our funding uh, will basically give us this uh, this tool uh, for an unlimited period of time, or will be limited and uh, will require eventually additional funding to, to still benefit from it? Yeah. So t thank you. So two two things. One, we we already start speaking with them. We ask them uh, as part of our outreach process. We ask them if they had any concerns. Uh, they indeed raise the, the same point that you did, that there is many private channels. Um, given that the nature of like what each channel is about and exactly how the, the foundation team is operating and things like that, uh, it only made sense to really have the super in-depth conversation about each specific channel, yes or no, it makes sense to, to have it included. Uh, if the proposal was to, was to pass, because if it doesn't pass, we might as well <laughs> save ourselves the time. And the, because it's a bot, it's fairly easy and, and actually will be them, the, like it needs to be the Discord admin who approves the bot, the bot and gives it permissions. It would be fairly straightforward for them to select each channel, whether the bot will have permission to read it or not. And if the bot doesn't have permission to read it, we'll have no mechanism whatsoever to access that data. So in that sense, is is pretty safe. Uh, then it's a matter of what they are comfortable with. And for that, I cannot speak on, on their behalf. But the, the more channels we're able to include, the more of a holistic picture we'll have. That being said, if it's only the public channels, the tool already works. And for example, in, in, in Aragon, because we're doing a similar approach with them, the, where there were certain channels where they had shared very private information, they didn't want disclose or any third party to have any access to it, so we didn't include those. Um, and despite of that, we were still able to generate multiple insights that they, they really appreciated and used to refine their community strategy. Um, then on to the, the second question. So the, the data collection tool is open source. The research is open source. And then at our own expense, we are creating a UI to visualize these insights. The, the way we're going to make this work sustainable is not something we have figured out yet. So the, the data collection tool and the, and the research is there forever, is for anyone else to use. As far as the, the UI, um, we can definitely say that at least, let's say, for the next six months or so, it's fully available to Cosmos. After that, uh, we have yet to figure out how we, how we maintain it and we'll probably be asking for a, a, a subsequent budget past that time to keep it alive and keep refining it and iterating it and adding things to it. Uh, but we have yet to figure that out. Okay, thank you. This is uh, clarify also the, all the technical aspects uh, that were still pending uh, for clarification uh, and uh, also the fact that uh, this proposal will also imply a continuation and a cooperation between uh, your entity, your uh, DAO and the Cosmos. So I think it's, it's very important for the community to understand that uh, this will imply not only Cosmos, but also uh, Web3 in general, in case uh, we want to start with journey with this uh, long term journey, I think in this case uh, with uh, with Erendao. And uh, 
Do you have uh, anything to add uh, that maybe uh, we haven't touched yet that uh, you want to talk about this uh, this proposal? Yeah, per perhaps to emphasize a little bit around the the funding that what we the the output value because sometimes there has been a little bit of confusion since we're also doing research and that kind of means it's broad and as as with any research project you don't exactly know what the output of the research is. Uh, but so to clarify what the deliverables are is in the very short term, um, I'm talking within maybe like six weeks or something like that. I'll, I'll have to check the exact details of my team. But uh, in the very short term, what we what we can deliver is the the insights and we can create the full report of everything that's been analyzed as after having refined the framework, after having collected the data, the implementation, all of that. What we can do is share to the community, here is the picture, here is the mirror of how things are going, here is what we learned, and here is the set of recommendations. Then that tool remains active, like can, can stay working. Uh, for now, it requires one of our data scientists, like usually Katerina is like manually extracting the data, but we're working on automating this so that then the, the 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 UI is updating automatically, and then over a period of time, you'll keep seeing how things are evolving. Uh, and that would be, let's say, slightly more the, the medium term after you get the first insights. And then over time, indeed, we hope to build a deeper relationship because there is a lot more that can be done in this area, uh, but that would be fairly independent of already the community receiving the, receiving the insights and of course, having all the mechanisms built that were re that are required to be able to produce the insights. Okay, so uh, the community will also have uh, short-term benefit, and I think also that uh, you said in the draft that uh, it will require also for the first two four weeks uh, as a timeline. I think uh, that uh, any community member that. Uh, when I read the draft, uh, there is also the, the explanation of uh, some short-term uh, timeline. Um, if any community member uh, want to jump on uh, and discuss and bring some question, uh, I think uh, this is the right time, or make a question uh, in, the, in the comments of the Twitter space. I think uh, the conversation uh, kind of covered uh, all the aspects uh, of the proposal and especially the mission. and. Uh, I'm happy to know that uh, uh, that Daniel also <laughs> has been looking at the past of Cosmos Sub and uh, past drama and uh, all this kind of dynamics that, uh, after all, it's, uh, it is why this could be something uh, good for Cosmos in case uh, we need to, to, to find a better approach uh, to our community and to especially find a mutual understanding. I think it, it is something very important. And... Um, if uh, if no if no one want to add something, I think uh, we can bring this up. And uh, thank you everyone to participate. Uh, Daniela, maybe you want to add uh, something to close the conversation. Well, primarily thanking everyone for for all the time they have dedicated to engaging with us in this topic, for giving feedback on the proposal, which we've been incorporating and discussing as we see fit. And hopefully we get to work together very soon to keep advancing community and build the, the resilience and, and health of Cosmos. And we would be honored to support on making that happen. Thank you again for uh, participating and uh, share uh, your project uh, in, uh, and your knowledge about the community. Yeah. Finally, if, if, if anyone has still any concerns or doubts, please feel free to reach out to us. We're very open to hearing feedback and criticism. That always helps us improve our approach and how we communicate and the sort of things we're putting forward. So feel free to DM me. Um, in, in Twitter, my DMs are open. So just reach out. Thank you all.
Okay, I think if we don't have any um, questions or if anybody would like to um, share any further discussion points, um, I think we can end the call. But if not, then thank you all for your time and thank you all for joining. Yes, I, I, I think we can, uh, we can close the call uh, if, uh, if there is any more questions. And uh, thank you all for participating and uh, especially to take part in this community call, which, uh, which is a nice way to engage because uh, talking and having a conversation sometimes is, uh, is a better way to approach the cosmos and uh, the community and governance and all the aspects. Thank you, Daniel, again for uh, the explanation and your time. And uh, we can see you, we can see uh, everyone in the next call. Thank you all. Hopefully speak, see you all in the next call. Bye.